Good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Each and every month we have a prophetic word for you. The prophetic word for this month is true gospel. But what is the true gospel? Join in as we find out together. Be blessed. in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So 
merciful and kind. That's why I'm singing, Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind, yeah. Merciful and kind, that's why I'm singing. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind, yeah. Lord, you are kind. You are wonderful. Lord, you are merciful. My God, you are excellent. Excellent is your name, yeah. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Excellent is your power. Lord, you are Oh, yeah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are so good to us. Better than we know how to be to ourselves. And we love ourselves. But you are even better to us than we can be to ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. You are my everything, Lord, you are. My strength, my love, you are. My joy, my happiness, you are, you are, you are my everything, Lord, you are, my strength, my joy, you are, my love, my life, you are, hey, you are my everything, Lord, you are, my strength, my life, you are, my joy, my love, you are. Everything to me, you are my everything, Lord. My strength, my love, you are my life, my everything. Yeah, you are my strength, strength like the Strength like no other. Strength like. 
Anybody in here that needs the strength of the Lord? Ha. Do you need the strength of the Lord? It's right now. It's available for you. It's available for you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Just cling on to the Lord. Cling on to the Lord. Ha. And he'll see you true. He'll see you true. I prophesy anybody that needs strength. Strength of the Lord. Raise up your hands. I blow kisses to you. I thank you, Lord, for all that you do, all that you've done, and you're still about to do it. Oh, in the fullness, in the fullness, yeah, in the fullness of your name. In the power of your name. In the power of your name. Everything I owe to you, Lord Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, ah. See, you are good and your mercy is forever. such a privilege that we have to be among the living today thank you father for covering us thank you for giving us our hearts to be 
grateful unto you to know that you God you have been too good to us than anyone else has been father we thank you today of the things that you're about to do the things you're about to do in the life of each and every individual the ones that are here and the ones watching on the stream and father we pray that you are going to touch the hearts of every soul heal everybody lord that everyone will come into an experiential encounter with you Amen. thank you father for that which you're about to do i want you to please help me to stretch your hands towards the children that are standing all around the halter this morning father we pray for each and every one of this one's father lord that you, you clothe them with the garment of grace fill them with your holy spirit father mark them for the beauty of your excellence that everywhere they go, Lord, they are representing you and the kingdom. Thank you, Father, for that which you're about to do. We bless your name concerning this. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Help me just jam those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's sit down in the presence of the Lord as we take the electronic announcement. Welcome. Please pay attention to the following church announcement and God bless you as you participate in them. The church has two services lined up each and every Sunday. The first service starts from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and the second service from 12 noon to 1.30 p.m. Please bring your family members and friends. We would love to have you. Counseling with Pastor Chris take place every Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. but only by appointment. Please register with our church secretary, Sister Deborah Arono, in advance. Grow in the Word in our Bible studies, which take place on Wednesdays starting from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. There's also the possibility to join us online, and the link thereof you will find on our BOCC WhatsApp forum. Women's Prayer Meeting take place on the first and the third Friday starting from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Also, their prayer sessions take place online, so please check out their link, which is found on their WhatsApp forum. The youth of BOCC meet every Sunday morning from 8 a.m. to 8.45 a.m. and from 8.45 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Likewise, on every last Friday of the month, there's youth meetings starting from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Every youth is free to join and bring their friends too. The prayer intercessors meet on the first, second, and third Saturday of the month, starting from 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. There's also the possibility to join them online, and the link thereof you will find on the BOCC website. Night Vigil takes place on every last Friday of the month starting from 11 p.m. to the next morning. The venue for all church activities is the church auditorium. Any information not listed will be announced later on. Please visit our website at www.boccm-stuttgart.de. We wish you a fruitful week and stay blessed. Praise the Lord. Are you glad to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? Is there anyone joining us for the very first time today? If today is your very first time of being at BOCC, can you please wave at me, anyone joining us for the very first time today? Hallelujah. Everyone has always been here. Are you glad to be in the presence of the Lord today? Let's go by the way of Matthew chapter 18 as we go into the scripture. Oh, please help me to celebrate that sister over there. God bless you. Thank you for coming. I didn't know you are there on the other side. Praise the Lord. I was looking all the way to the back. <laughs> I don't know the blessing is very closer to me. Um, Matthew chapter 18 is going to be our study scripture today. As we look from verse 1 to verse 5, we are talking about the gospel of Jesus. And uh, we are going to see the scripture concerning such. Matthew chapter 18 from verse 1 till five can we please stand up for the reading of the word of the living god at the same time came the disciples unto jesus saying who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and jesus uh, called the little child unto him and said him in the midst of them and said verily i say unto you except ye be converted and become as a little child 
uh, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven and what whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name uh, received me whosoever received one little child like this in my name has received me spirit of the living god have your preeminence in this place give us a word for the season lord uh, give us the ability to understand the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of god and father to establish your will and your mandate upon the face of the earth thank you father for that which you're about to do and lord i pray that everyone that will be listening to you today either being on ground or online father lord god that their life is being edified and uh, lord i pray that you are glorified and at the end of the service the devil is terrified we give you all the glory and all the honor lord in jesus mighty name we pray somebody shout hallelujah let us sit in the presence of the lord god bless you richly uh, in this world in which we are living it's been said that there is news going on everywhere um, <clears throat> and news affects our lives quite interestingly enough uh, we have a different kind of social media form where we get information we are bombarded every day every hour every minute by new information of things that is going on all around the world we are bombarded this is uh, uh, one of the greatest generation in history that has been spoiled with too much of information uh, now I don't know uh, if there is only the good part of it and not also the other side part of it uh, this is a generation that we are open to 24 hours news uh, I remember when I was growing up it wasn't uh, that old uh, far felt uh, there was always a set time to hear the news after the set time is over that is it you cannot go back and repeat it again uh, you wait for the news for it to be broadcasted and then you are going to know what is going on uh, now in our days uh, you don't have to wait for the news even they give you a uh, a preview of the news before the news is actually broadcasted uh, they give you even trailer <laughs> of the news before it starts even happening at times I even wonder if the news is actually a news of what is happening or they are making things to happen so that they can have a news I'm sure I missed some of you because the news we are having today is so current that it's even more earlier than the happenings. <laughs> so that means even before the thing is happening, you have all the broadcasters and the journalists on spot giving you a life information of everything that is happening. And it's not in a particular place all over the world. So, we are living in a world in which uh, news is very um, frequent and we have a lot of it. And it's been said that this news is creating our mindset, number one. Uh, it's creating our mindset. The news that we hear daily is giving us an identity of who we are. Uh, the second thing that news does is uh, it creates uh, the environment in which we live. It brings an awareness of the environment in which we live. The third thing that the news is doing to us is uh, the news is actually determining our dreams and visions. I don't, I don't know if you heard what I just said. So that means when you go to bed, you are actually uh, subconsciously affecting your dreams and how you are going to see your vision due to the fact of the news you listen to the, the days before or hour or minutes before and uh, number four uh, the the news that we are listening to affect us negatively not only positively it also affects us negatively by which it uh, it gives uh, the crowd and the people of our days depression 
so imagine in the world in which we are living uh, you are not we are not out of a pandemic yet and then we are having a flood okay and then uh, the flood is happening and before you know it we are hearing well the vaccination we are not sure if it's going to be able to cover uh, the next mutation of Delta and uh, before that one finishes we are going to hear another news watch out for the news you are going to hear next week so actually the whole public is actually hardly based and strong of what evil is going to happen so uh, no one is actually in expectance of something good anymore everything everybody's expecting is how to create a hardened heart so that we'll be able to receive a hard news okay uh, i know uh, the ones that are grown up might not really understand it but when you start to speak to the teenager they will be able to tell you that actually they are growing their resistance in ability to be able to accept more bad news in case this happens so how am I not going to fall apart? So uh, the mind of the next generation we are having is settling itself, trying to brace and uh, uh, trying to cover itself us with all these walls uh, so that they are not going to fall apart in case something bad happens. And that is the generation in which we are living right now. And if we are not careful, we are even enforcing it on our children that life is not easy. So everywhere they go, all they hear is uh, just praise yourself. Evil can happen anytime. So uh, in the vicinity of that, Pastor Chris, we are, you, what are you trying to tell us? In the vicinity of all that, we are still trying to tell them that uh, all things are possible with God after we have braced their heart on the negativity we are still trying to fix the positivity somewhere no wonder they are not really accepting it why because the world in which we are building them for is always to be able to go through the difficult moment but never to expect how to thrive through with a good news brothers and sisters in the Lord, the whole of the month of uh, July, the seventh month of 2001, BOCC, we have made it our declaration that this month is going to be our month of true gospel. Did you hear what I just said? So gospel means, come on, help me somebody, good news. So it doesn't matter whatever is going on in our world, we are declaring the good news of the kingdom. We are saying that our heart is not being brazen to be able to accept the bad things that is happening, but our heart is brazen to receive what God is about to do. So it doesn't matter how difficult it might be finding it in the world, God is empowering us to make the difference. So that means uh, uh, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Uh, that means that uh, what God has placed inside of us is greater than that which lives in the world. The Bible says, uh, uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So it doesn't matter however, whatever is happening around us, we have to embrace ourselves with the gospel of truth gospel of Jesus Christ brothers and sisters in the Lord for anyone that is listening to me for the first time today we have been talking about this gospel and we are looking into different dimensions uh, last week we were able to talk about uh, the gospel of Jesus and we were able to talk even concerning how this gospel has influence on our lives it gives us uh, recognition for forgiveness of sin we see recognition of who we are uh, the third thing we saw last week is the acceptance of what Christ has done. And um, the, the fourth thing is the healing. And uh, the fifth thing that we were not able to go through last week Sunday is the worship. The worship that means uh, after you have received uh, the ability of the healing power of God, uh, there is a worship that starts to go out of you. Now, worship is not when you sing a song. Worship is not only uh, when you are trying to be grateful unto God. 
worship is a whole lifestyle worship means to god belong all the glory great things he has done yeah. worship means uh, even despite yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i shall do what fear no evil why for thou art with me come on now thy rod does what so now when you have an awareness of that you are declaring a worship standard that means uh, even though you are living here you are an ambassador here even though you are living here on earth you are not supposed to be like the people of the earth you have to be understanding the vision of the kingdom uh, brothers and sisters in the lord uh, uh, and then you know i just want to slip this one in somewhere in the middle i know i'm making this public i know um we are we are streaming right now and uh, this week that just passed uh one of my our dear sisters in the lord she's sitting down in the congregation today lost her mom uh, lost her mom sister Dockers. Uh, we're still praying for you and everybody in your family that god will uh, put his hands upon you that he will give you the comfort that you need in the mighty name of jesus so immediately she heard the news uh some of the strangest thing that has happened to me being in ministry is this sister the first person she called was her pastor uh, she did not call any other person she did not look for wherever to get the comfort he says i need to call my father in the lord and while she was still crying with that strange news give me a call and i i was trying to pick up the call and all i was hearing is just weeping and sobbing and uh and you know that devastation you just lost your mom your mom is uh, over some thousand of kilometers away only to hear that news and uh, i was trying to figure out what is going on and she could just say one word my mom died passed away and uh and while that was going on she was sobbing and anyone that knows Pastor Chris, I'm not going to preach to you whenever you're going through your sobbing moment. Because anyone that's going through your sobbing moment, you don't need someone to preach to you right there. All I was doing, it was like, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, oh. So the Bible says, cry with those that are crying and rejoice with those that are rejoicing. So all I could say do is just to be there and listen to her until she was tired of me listening and says, Pastor Chris, I have to hang the phone. I said, that is good. Before I start crying on the other side. So, so, and then uh, drop the phone and I'm, I'm sure I'm exposing Sister Dockers right now because I want the whole church by the end of the service to give her all the hugs she needs because by the end, uh, by tomorrow or so, she's traveling back home to take care of the burial of her mom. And uh, only for her to call me some uh, few hours later and with all the joy in her voice and I was trying to figure out what happened between the time we spoke and the time you are speaking now and she was so revealed revealed in her heart we spoke on wednesday and she was uh, very full of joy and happiness and i was trying to figure out what happened so everything i could have told her she was preaching back to me she was telling me good news and she was telling me it is good it went the way it went thank god i was trapped in kenya for almost half a year having good time with my mother and she also having good time with my kids we were bonding together we never knew what god was doing then all we wanted to do is to get back to germany not knowing that god was giving us the special time to spend together so the corona was bad for many people but it was good that i went home and i was trapped so uh and she was so happy that uh, the mother does not have to stay in that condition of being in a coma for one and a half years having to change the, the the diapers for god knows how long uh the mother just died in the split of some few minutes nothing happened she was not sick nothing she was about to go to do her regular work and there she collapsed and she was gone quite a sudden death and she was like we could not expect something better 
and she has already prepared all of us before she left so that way uh she was now telling me it says it's a good news because uh everything that i would have loved to happen happened this is even a good time to even go it says what would have happened if it will happen when uh my father died when i didn't have the opportunity to go back home so in the midst of the situation she was able to drive out the good news about the situation many of us we sit down in this place we go through the the trouble uh the terror sorry and the horror of our day-to-day -day activities but we didn't see what is good in that thing because when we miss what is good in it then the fact that it happens has already lost its taste do you know that everything that happens to you has a reason we might not fully understand but brothers and sisters in the lord there is always a reason and i'm very sure for everyone that's sitting down in this place um if i could ask you that can you look back into some few things that happened to you some years past and you thought it was devastating only for you to figure out that it was good it happened the way it went let me just see you if you are here in the house and you are happy it went the way it went then because of uh, how good God has brought you through those moments. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ uh, was uh, telling his disciple that uh, in this condition that you guys are finding yourself, I'm bringing the kingdom. The kingdom uh, is not uh, me establishing a kinship right here, just like the worldly people sees it so while jesus christ was going around uh, declaring his kingdom uh the disciples were actually arguing among one another who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom can you imagine that they were saying who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom who is going to sit on the right who is going to sit on the left the disciples were actually thinking about the position but not thinking about the responsibility so uh when we come to the house of the lord when we deal with our da daily life activities we do not uh, understand that our life is not about uh, the position and the rewards our life is all about the responsibility we are taking the reward is going to come uh one thing i've learned from every successful man is that they are not looking at the reward I checked it, brothers and sisters in the Lord, believe me. Uh, I read as much as I could go to, uh, to read all the 50 most richest people in the world. 50 first ones. I figured out that none of them were interested in the money. All of them were interested in the assignment. And then the assignment produced the reward. And uh, so uh, Jesus Christ was trying to say to the disciples when they gathered themselves together, who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom? And Jesus, oh, you have lost it all. It is about reducing yourself to become humble. It is for you to look like a child. A child uh, is looking into the, uh, the face of the mother, the face of the father to take care of them and take care of the rewards. All they are trying to live is to live their own part. Are you living your part? Are you doing what God has called you to do? Or all we do daily, day-to-day -day activities that we do is just to show to people what we are able to achieve. Uh, see how far I have gone. See the kind of uh, degree I've already attained. Uh, see uh, what kind of job I'm, I'm working in. Oh, check out my salary. Have you seen the new car I just bought? Uh, do you see my house that I'm living in? Do you know where my holiday house is? Uh, do you know the kind of people I am hanging out with? Did you see the party of last weekend? And uh, we try to uh, show to people something that has absolutely no value. But the value uh, things in our life is when we start to understand our assignment. Jesus Christ is uh, bringing this information to his disciples and there we see the gospel of the kingdom of the son in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 9 Romans chapter 1 verse 9 he gives us uh, a quite interesting information Romans uh, chapter 1 verse 9 uh, about uh, what is the kingdom of the son 
today I'm just going to touch a little bit on the kingdom of the Son, and then I'm going to look into the kingdom um, of God himself. So, um, and there, if you give it to me, God bless you. For God is my witness, whom I serve uh, with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without season I make mention of you always in my prayer. So Paul was speaking to the Romans. He says, this is the gospel of the Son. Uh, which I do and how do I do it uh, I do it with all my spirits without ceasing by mentioning you always in my prayer uh, this uh, gospel is a gospel of intercession of thinking about other people higher than me thinking about myself uh, I know this is difficult in our days because uh, we are all combated together uh, I was reading a particular information of how this uh, new generation we are so spoiled with everything and still we are ungrateful yeah the suicide rate in this generation is higher than it has ever been and not because of the fact that we are not having it but because of the fact that we have too much we have two mobiles phone um my brother in the Lord was uh, at my place today. Uh, yesterday. I don't want to expose him, uh, the Mr. Testimony himself. Uh, we thank God for his life. He's in the house today. Uh, he has four mobile phones. So, uh, and uh, you cannot imagine how, how much information we do have. Uh, how powerful uh, we have an iPad, we have laptop. Maybe we have two iPads, uh, and then, you know, we have our apartment, we have a big screen TV, we have the smaller screen for the computer, and still we are not satisfied. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, our closet has clothes inside it with a hang tag still on it. <laughs> that we bought last year. Come on, talk back to me now. And still, we are still making new orders in Amazon. <laughs> well, all the husband that are sitting next to their wife, God help you out. Uh, please don't mention anything. And then we are still, <laughs> we are still buying new shoes, new bags, new hats. Come on, say yes to it, all the women that are in the house. Praise the Lord and all the men too that you know are on my side. Mm -hmm. And and still unsatisfied. And you start asking yourself, now where is the satisfaction? Brothers and sisters in the Lord, not when you start to pour your life out, you will never be satisfied. I'm just giving you a way out to help you out of your depression and oppression. Anyone that suffers so much in depression, you are not pouring your, uh, your life out. There is an area in your life where you are just piling in. You need to learn how to give out. The Bible says it is better to give than to receive. He's not only talking about giving money. He's talking about giving your time. Thinking uh, about how to give uh, your excellence, your ability, your knowledge, your wisdom, your, 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 your gifts. Uh, the things that you are able to do. When are you going to start using it for other people? Uh, you, you, can, you are good in tailoring. When are you going to start sewing clothes? Uh, you are good in business. When will you start to be helping other people's business? Not yours. Uh, you are good uh, in calculating. When will you start calculating for other people? There are, I'm not talking about doing it for yourself now. I'm talking about looking into around you. Don't look too far. <laughs> Most of the time we try to look too far. I'm one of those people, I'm so pragmatic in my way of doing my Christianity and doing what I believe in God. I just like to look around me. Don't look too far. When we start to look too far, we're trying to make a religion out of it. Look around you. How you can help people that are around you in the situation where they are finding yourself. And you know you have that ability in your hands. The, the, uh, the gospel of the son is the gospel of intercession. The Bible says in the book of uh, Hebrew, it says, He forever maketh intercession for who? For us. That's the work of the son. is interceding on our behalf. And 
each and every Saturday here, you have group of people, men and women, that gather themselves here to intercede. Not necessarily for themselves. They are interceding for the church. And if you can join one of this group, you cannot be coming to this church for the past five years, six years, seven years, and you have not joined any department. And when we ask you, you say, uh, my department is to sit down and keep the chair warm. Uh, my, my department has not been defined yet. I'm still praying. Are you kidding me? You are here for the past five years. You are pray, praying to who? Uh, for the past two years, you still haven't found your department? register in all of them yeah tell them i want to be part of anything at all you will be discovering it as time goes on and you'll be dropping them one after the other until you find the right one where you belong to but please don't get yourself in a congregation that you are not part of because uh, this thing is not a regularity of going to a religious place but acting on our belief I'm talking about uh, the gospel of Jesus. If this is the same gospel we are still doing, it is standing in the gap. The Bible says in the book of uh, Ezekiel, it says, I looked throughout the whole land for someone to stand in the gap of my people, but I found none. So whose gap are you standing on, brothers and sisters? This is the gospel I'm bringing to us. If you want to uh, bring the gospel to our world, our dying world around us, you will have to learn, each and every one of us has to learn how to stand in gap for someone else. How to plead someone else's case. How to go to a court case with a brother or a sister just to be there with them. What about just going to an operation room in case it's allowed? I know with all the uh, corona uh, restrictions, <laughs> now you cannot do things like that. But at least yeah, just walk them to the hospital and say, I'll be standing in front of the gate. In the, next 10, in the next 10 minutes to 30 minutes, I will be standing here interceding on your behalf. I just want to be there for you. There are many things we can do which are the gospel of the Son walking behind the curtains uh, what about uh, there there are some there are many ministry that you cannot see many ministry you cannot see and they are walking behind the curtains and you don't see them in the front what you see is pastor chris almost every sunday uh, is here ministering but you have no idea who are the people that is making it to work if those people are not there believe me you will not see pastor chris and uh, they are making sure that it is being broadcasted, making sure that the church is ready. People are here an hour before Pastor Chris even gets to church. And people will be here an hour after Pastor Chris leaves. Well, I'm not sure about that. Uh, but people will still be working behind the curtain. Many, many have their own position in making sure that uh, the things is running brothers and sisters in the Lord, not until we get to that position of involving ourselves. Pastor Chris, I'm involving myself already in the ministry. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to your neighbor. Uh, sitting next to you and still don't know the fact that it is extremely important for you to be part of it. Given to people who are not eligible. Uh, given to people that uh, do not even carry the right to be blessed. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I read a particular part in the book of Romans uh, chapter 11 last night, which almost scared me. Uh, uh, it was uh, Paul that was speaking and was talking about God himself. God says, uh, I sought those ones that did not seek after me. I, I blessed those ones that rejected me. And I remember the scripture in the Old Testament that says, uh, those that seek him diligently shall find him. And God himself is saying that uh, the ones that are not seeking me, those are the ones I'm now seeking after. So to put jealousy upon Israel. So, uh, uh, and not until we understand uh, this mystery and this mystery of the gospel of Christ himself that is ready to sort out for the people that are not seeking after God. That means you are not only looking for church members, you are not only looking for brothers and sisters in the Lord, you are looking for people that doesn't even believe in your God, that doesn't cherish what you do. 
doesn't give value to what you give values to when we start to be reaching forth into our world and not just to you know uh, uh, solitude ourselves and move to one side and allow the world to go in the basket inside hell and we have no influence upon them my prayer is that as long as I live may I not have contact with anybody that we go to hell you just say what I say as long as I live may I not have contact with anybody that at the end of their life they will still go to hell how come something must be wrong my prayer is that everyone I have contact with I want to see you in heaven in one way or the other that we cannot come this close and at the end of the day you will not be able to uh, change your life to understand what the kingdom of God is all about. Then I start questioning, am I putting pressure on myself and making sure that if there is anything I could do to make sure that this kingdom has a reflection upon your life, I need to do my own work. Jesus Christ is saying, he says, uh, the days are short, the nights are near. And I need to do the work of the Father as long as it is day. Yeah. As long as you have the strength. As long as you can speak. As long as you have uh, the ability to walk in the place where you are working. Uh, as long as you have the grace to be able to do what you are doing. Who knows how long that job opportunity will be open. Who even knows you got that uh, uh, that possibility to work in that company just to minister to one person. And at the end of the day, for us to miss it, that will be in vain. And we only thought we are there to collect the salary. But God decided to reward you with that salary so that he's going to use your life to touch the life of just somebody. My prayer for each and everyone that is sitting down in this place, that whoever God is assigning you to touch their life, in this season, may you not miss any one of them. Please say better amen on that one. I said everyone that God has connected you with to bring a, a difference in their life, I pray that you will not miss your assignment. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that there will not be a record in heaven waiting for you to tell you that you have missed it here servant of God I'm praying to God concerning your life that that mission will be accomplished in the mighty name of Jesus directly or indirectly uh, I want to see how uh, we are going to be able to carry this gospel this thing we call the gospel uh, I wish I could be able to I decide not to go uh, in, a, in a direction which I am being lured to want to go to explaining you know the kingdom of heaven uh, and its difference to the kingdom of God and explaining all this and this and sorts I want to break it down as simple as it could sound so that everybody can run with it uh, at school uh, yeah. each and every time you go to school Lord who are the people you are connecting me with Lord whose destiny is tied to mine Lord who's, who, who is that friend that I need to know Lord who is that person that uh, uh, you are sending me to make a touch in their lives and uh, you will be amazed when you start to make such prayers how God will be opening doors and shutting doors there was one time in my life uh, I made prayer. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, in the area of fashion, no one is looking forth for you. Uh, I heard Holy Spirit laughing, you, you know, uh, while I was making that prayer. Is, I said, uh, you know, no one in the fashion business. He said, you have absolutely no idea uh, how many people are serving me. So I thought uh, in a moment I was feeling like Elijah. Anyone has ever felt like Elijah before? All right. So anyone that thinks that Elijah is all in calling fire from heaven, you just miss the whole thing. You, you have to read the whole Bible and find out that that's the smallest thing Elijah was able to do. Call fire from heaven, that was a regularity. The most thing of Elijah was he's a man of sorrow, a man of depression, a man of loneliness, 
a man that keeps on looking at the situation and not seeing how he's mending out with his revelation. A man that uh, talks to God and says, where are you? They want to kill me. The man that tells God and says, nobody is serving you. And God has, I mean, listen to his conversation. Elijah was not that pure. When we study him very well. And I remember people goes like, ha, ha, I cannot even call fire from heaven. Ha, the fire that is killing people? Did you see what Elijah did? You don't want to be killing people, do you? If I can call fire, all of the witches in my village, I will burn them. <laughs> Sister Cynthia say yes. Amen. Give me that anointing. There are some people I want to burn up. Fry them up like a barbecue. No wonder the fire is not coming. Yeah. So, uh, and there are some, uh, uh, when you look at Elijah, Elijah was asking all these questions. He's like, well, where are they? And God says, you have no idea. There are many in, in their thousand seven, to be precise, who has not actually bowed their head to another God. And he thought he was alone. So while I made my prayer uh, uh, on that day, Holy Spirit says, there are many. You I said, God, just show me one. Show me one person this particular month that is serving you and is in the fashion business. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we do not believe it. Uh, it was the next day I was working with a 21-year-old 20, individual. 21. 21 old uh, young man uh, moved um, from um, Fulda to Stuttgart. People know where Fulda is, it rises in the middle of Germany. Uh, moved from Fulda, is approximately four hours away from here. Moved from Fulda to Germany, uh, to Stuttgart, sorry. And he was doing his fashion thing. And, uh, and this guy, I, I could not think anything because uh, his right hand is full of tattoos. His left hand is halfly covered with tattoo. So, uh, so there is no much to expect. You see how we judge people, including Pastor Chris too. That is how you know we are all human. So when I saw the whole tattoo, I already saw devil coming. So, uh, <laughs> so, so I, I was just praying in tongues. And then my boss did something very crazy. I'm telling you the story because it's going to help everybody. And uh, my time is really running very fast, but I, I'm sure this is going to help somebody in this place. And uh, to make the situation worse, my boss says, I'm handling you this guy. I want you to train him. The, the same way you are laughing, I was really crying. Because I was thinking, how could you handle, the right hand is completely full of tattoo. There is no space for another one. You know, what, you know when you're making your jotters in a piece of paper? And when you fill it up, and you're trying to look for a place to write? His hand was like that. There is no other tattoo space. And then the other one was already halfly full. So, uh, and that was the joke I I actually opened our conversation with. I said, well, there is no place to write anymore. The whole paper is full. Can we change? So, he said, what are you trying to say? I said, your hands is full. Can we change? Can we exchange you for something else? He says, uh, what are you trying to say? I said, can we exchange you completely? We don't have any place to... He says, I'm being exchanged. I said, you've been exchanged how? He says, I will let you know later on. So we started working uh, after two days, three days, and, uh, and later on, uh, he says to me, he says, I need to tell you this, Chris. I was like, what do you need to tell me? He says, I, I feel it so deep in my heart to tell you this. He says, nobody knows about it. I said, please let me know. He says, I moved from Fulda to Stuttgart to serve God. I, 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 I said, what? I said, which God? Yeah, because we need to be sure. You know, now G-O-D can mean anything. So, uh, I try to make it clear. It says, the Lord Jesus Christ I'm serving. I said, with all them tattoos. It says, don't judge 
the book by its cover. Uh, uh, it says, uh, I told you some days ago, I've already been changed. I said, that was what you mean. I said, because I've been praying in tongues. He said, can we just do that together? I said, are you? Went to the back of the store. I was blowing in tongues. It was blowing. I was opening my right eye. I was trying to be sure if his tongue is real. For the Bible says, test our spirit. So I want to see what this guy was about to conjure. Because I don't know which God is still serving. And then he changed into, into German and started praying. Filled with the Holy Spirit. With tears in his eyes. I said, Lord, have mercy. And the Holy Spirit says, well, I'm just trying to tell you you are not the only one. I said, oh, no, Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. So I went on my knees, forgive me, Lord. I'm, forgive me, I messed up again. Came to Stuttgart to go to a Bible school. Because he believes that uh, he needs to go fully for God. And he's a German too. Not all them Holy Spirit filled African. The things they are Holy Spirit filled. But you give them a little bit of temptation. Alright, let me leave that one alone. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Pastor Chris, why did you tell you that story? Why did you tell us that story? I'm telling you that uh, the gospel of Jesus is so real. And, um, and they are all around us. And you have no idea who are the people that are not human that we see. Uh, they are angels. I'm not talking about devil now because some of you, when I say they are not human, say, hey, I know that my boss is possessed. I tell you, I'm bringing good news this morning. Uh, there are people around us who are not coming from the pit of hell. They are ordained by God himself. Uh, I, I, I look the fact that uh, I, I rarely see, rarely see people. I'm talking, uh, not the one I heard, not the one that they tell their story. I mean see. Shake their hands and they tell me the reason why I moved there is to serve God. People move for different reasons. To go for studies. To do house building. To get a new job. To get married. People move uh, to want to do this or that. Now, I'm not trying to put blame on anybody. I'm just saying I haven't seen one that says the reason why I moved there is so to serve God. I'm not saying I'm not hearing. I have 1,000 stories. I'm saying the one that I shake their hands, see their face, work together with them, and that guy, that boy, was able to show to me that there is still possibility. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, what gospel are we preaching? If all our life is just we doing us, and somewhere in the middle, we start to sneak Jesus inside, just to prove to people that we are still the servant of God. Uh, or is the other way around? That all our life, we are just looking after what God wants done. And we are ready to go into it head on. So that means it doesn't matter whatever anybody thinks. I'm still going to serve the Lord. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, let us get to that position. That is my uh, illustration today. Let's get to that position whereby, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Because this life you are having is only one. You are not having double. You are not going to have a second chance of another life. Now, if God gives you a second chance and you live through whatever incident happened in your life, it's so that God can show to the world that God can still do mighty things. And he has made you to survive so that you can be able to live the gospel. My prayer for everyone that is listening today is the gospel of Jesus will be seen in your life. That everywhere you go, you are going to be a replica of Jesus himself. You will be an epistle of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. People will not only read you, they will see you, they will smell you, they will shake your hands, and they will know that God is good. Stand to your feet, everybody. Praise the Lord. 
There are a second batch that I'm not able to go through today. But I just want to hold it right there because if I start it, it will make me to be running on and on. My prayer today and uh, where I want to look into today, brothers and sisters in the Lord, I'm, I'm not sure everybody got this, is so that we are going to become a good news. Listen, bad news is everywhere. But I want you today to make a commitment to yourself. Everyone I'm going to meet this week, I'm going to reflect a good news. Is that so difficult to do? Let us put the whole church in fasting. You know what? We are, we are not fasting on food. We are not fasting on water. We are not fasting on sugar. We are not fasting on tea. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are fasting. We are fasting on we not telling bad news. Uh, we not uh, uh, saying that it is not possible. That whatever anybody comes up with you with this whole week, all you are going to tell them that it is still possible with God. With man, it is impossible. But with God, come on now, all things. I want you to uh, fast for seven days. Uh, Pastor Chris, well, how am I going to fast? You are not going to complain in the next seven days. My Lord. That is very difficult for somebody. Come on, put those hands together for Jesus if you want to do so. Yeah. No, no, no complain in the next seven days. Are you ready to go on this fast? Please, you can eat three times a day. You can eat five times a day. But no complain. <laughs> yeah, you are, not going to, you are not going to pick up the phone and complain to somebody of something they didn't do it doesn't matter how it hurts you you will bite your teeth together and say I am fasting Holy Spirit help me are you still here uh, anyone that's going to do you wrong I'm sure Holy Spirit is going to bring all of them together this next week everyone that gets on your nerve and whenever you see them you're not going to ask about the 1000 euros they borrowed and they never paid Come on, talk back to me now. Are we still fasting? After the seven days, you can complain. I say you can. But this seven days is going to be holy unto the Lord. Everything that goes out of your mouth has to be positive and has to be, uh, uh, <laughs> they have to be seasoned by the word of God. Anybody's ready to go on that fast together with me? Let me see your hands. I just want to know who, who are together. We are together on this. Thank you. Make sure your wife is raising up her hands. Make sure your husband, your little ones, your friend. Make sure everyone on your row is holding up their hands. Let me ask again. I'm, not, uh, I'm going to make sure, you're, make sure everybody in your row. So if there is nobody, somebody in your row is not raising up their hand, you know where you are going to start your intercession. You have to pray for that person. That this whole seven days, from now, from now till Sunday, oh my Lord, no complaint. Uh, no excuses. From the next seven days, uh, you are not going to utter wrong words. Am I still talking to church goers you are not going to curse out on anybody should I make it clear you are not going to abuse anybody ah, you see you see preaching is coming from left and right now it's like lord even my child <laughs> even my teenager alright every teenager that is listening to me no complaint You do your house of garbage. You do your house cleaning. Whatever they tell you to do, you make sure you do it. And you will do it with a smile on your face. My Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, let me ask a question. Who is going to go on that fast together for the next seven days? Let me see your hands. So, you, uh -huh. you see the ones that are not raising up their hands? 
Okay, start praying for them. Start praying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anyone in this place that has not given their life to Jesus? Anyone online has not given their life to Jesus? This is an, a great opportunity to do so. Uh, God is uh, calling you home. Calling you to, uh, to the gospel of peace gospel of forgiveness of reconciliation righteousness and to the gospel of faithfulness god is always faithful men might not be faithful but god is faithful uh, it doesn't matter how you have been deceived by man god is not a man that he will lie now the son of man that he will repent have you said he would not do it have you spoken it and he will not make it good god is good Come on, I say God is good. So if you are watching us online, if you are standing somewhere in the corner in this vicinity and you have not given your life to Jesus, this is an opportunity to do so. Uh, if you are here today and says, God, uh, I just want you to use me to be able to discover what you have placed inside of me uh, to use to represent you in my world, uh, I want to also pray together with you. Wherever you are standing, if you wanted to come to the altar, you can do so. But those are my two prayer requests this morning. Uh, I want to pray concerning that. That Lord, uh, whatever you have placed inside of me that I have not discovered yet. And uh, I know there is a need full of it. So that the world around me will see you and see your glory. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, just go ahead and pray together with me. If, if you want to come to the altar, you can do so. Just go ahead and raise up your voice unto the Lord. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for this day. We pray this day, Lord God, that you are going to touch the hearts of your people, the hearts of your sons, the hearts of your daughters, Lord Jesus, to be able to uh, discover what you have placed inside of them. Lord God, I pray that you are going to bring souls into the kingdom. Lord, that you are going to touch the hearts of men, touch the hearts of women. Lord, we announce and we proclaim in this place that you are God. And Lord, there is no way we can be able to do this work without you enhancing us and using us to bring glory to your name. Lord, we put all the flesh at the, at the feet of the cross today. Lord, we say no flesh is going to glory in your presence. And Lord, we pray that you fill us with your Holy Spirit. Change our hearts, O God. Lord, there are some things in our life we cannot help ourselves. If you don't help us, we don't know where to run to. Lord, we need your grace today. We need your power today. We need your loving kindness today more than ever before. Lord, we need your strength to go another seven days. Lord, help us through. Give us the grace to make the right choices. Oh, the right choices. The right choices. Lord, help us, help us, build us, renew us. Uh, yes, Father. Thank you, Father, for that which you are doing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Jam those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Wow, what an incredible service. Thank you so much for watching. If this has blessed you, then join our BOCC family. It's just one click away. Wherever you are, grab your family and let's make this an every week situation. And moreover, share this and bless someone around you. Feel free to visit our BOCC website and social media platforms. Thanks again and I wish you a beautiful week.